In this tutorial, we're going to create an alpha channel that allows us to separate the duck from the white background so that we may bring this image into a compositing application like Adobe After Effects or into a nonlinear editor such as Adobe Premiere Pro or Avid Media Composer without having to cut a mat in one of those applications. So there are several tools in Photoshop that will allow you to make a selection and eventually turn it into an alpha channel. The first, and perhaps the most obvious, is the lasso tool. So the lasso tool, as the name implies, allows you to lasso an image and whatever's within the area you lasso is selected and whatever is outside of it is not selected. As you can tell, this is very tedious. It's, only, it's not terribly accurate. Of course, I'm having a better day with the mouse than I usually do. But I really don't have the patience to finish this whole image. So I'll just bail on it right now. And I will try another tool. There's also the Polygon Lasso tool, which basically allows you to let go of the mouse from time to time. So you click a point, and then you click another point, and then you click another and another, all the way around your image. And as you can see from point to point, Photoshop draws a straight line. So it doesn't adhere to curves. See? So on a curved image like this duck, it's not an ideal tool. And we'll just bail on this one as well. I'll deselect it. And I'll try the third lasso tool, which is the magnetic lasso tool. As the name implies, uh, it is drawn to the edges through a kind of clever algorithm to find high contrast areas. And it inserts control points. It deals well with curves. And it's a pretty darn good tool. But also, it has a high level of tedium. So I, again, don't have the patience. And if you look closely, you can tell right where the head and the back of the duck uh, make contact. That line wasn't so neat anyway. So perhaps the lasso tool isn't our most accurate tool for this. Fortunately, there's another set of tools. There is the quick select tool which basically allows you to just click on the areas of the image you want selected. And it will keep adding with each subsequent click to the selected area. And this did a pretty darn good job. That took four clicks. In this case, where we have an absolutely solid background, it would have been faster to use the magic wand tool, which selects all contiguous pixels in the same color range. And here we have a selection of the white background. Now remember, what we want to select is the duck. And so I want to select the inverse. I'll go to the Select menu. I'll choose Inverse. And now the duck is selected. And now I go into my Channels window, which is in the same um, palette as Layers and Paths. I'll go to the Channels window, and at the bottom of the Channels palette, you will see uh, the option to create a channel out of a selection. So that means whatever is selected will become a new channel, and it will default to creating an alpha channel. Watch what happens when I click the button. Voila, we have an alpha channel. And if we look at that channel to the exclusion of the other channels, you'll see that um, the duck is white, meaning when I bring it into Adobe After Effects, that portion of the uh, image will be opaque, and the background, the white background, is now black, um, meaning it will be transparent. So you won't see the white background when I drop this image into an Adobe After Effects composition or into an Avid Media Composer timeline, etc. So I'll go back to looking at the RGB. I'll turn off the alpha and I will save this image. It was originally a TIFF file, uh, and TIFF files allow you to save with an alpha channel, and that is my preferred still image um, format. 
JPEGs do not allow you to save with an alpha channel, so that's important to keep in mind. That's how to create an alpha channel in Photoshop.